Hello everyone and welcome. This is Martha from Dental Brush Ups and today we have a very special guest for all of you. Here with us is Ms. Jasmine Haley. Ms. Jasmine Haley is the founder and CEO of Beyond the Profi. She is also the co-founder of the Inspire the Future Summit for Dental Hygiene Educators and the co-founder of the Mom Genus Community. She has over 18 years of experience as a dental hygienist, educator, and dental assistant. Within those years, she has served eight years in academia in a full-time adjunct and consultant capacity. Currently, she is a full-time educator at Wake Technical Community College Dental Hygiene Program. And Jasmine is also an award-winning national speaker, podcaster, and pro-educator. Almost eight years ago, the woman you see today did not exist. Her passion and brilliance was simmered down to non-existence because she opted to play small and live her life in fear. She came to the realization it was time for a change. It was time to live her life, to face her fears, to take care of herself, and to nurture the queen within. She took her side hustle and created a six-figure business and she helps female entrepreneurs do the same while also conquering their fear, self-doubt, self-doubt, and overwhelm that often plague many new entrepreneurs. Wow, Jasmine, thank you for being here. You are like um, what we call a hygiene diva. <laughs> so it is a pleasure to have you here today. Hygiene queen. Hygiene the queen. Hygiene okay. queen. <laughs> Oh, it's so nice to have you here with us, Jasmine, and to share some of your knowledge with all of us. So, Jasmine, can you tell us about your journey and how you became an entrepreneur? Um, I fell into entrepreneurship. Um, it wasn't something I ever thought I would do. Um, honestly, I thought that when I went into academia, that was going to be it for me. Like I was just going to be an educator until I was ready to retire. My kids were going to go to the same school. Like I had it all mapped out. Um, and most dental hygienists, we are type A. We want to control every single aspect of our day. We want to tr control every single aspect of our life. And life does not work out that way. So I wind up working in a very um, toxic work environment and um, wind up getting very, very sick because of stress-related illness, repeated visits to the hospital, um, emergency room for gastrointestinal pain, debilitating gastrointestinal pain, horrible um, migraines, um, anxiety, depression, heart palpitations. I mean, you name it, I was experiencing it and then was getting negative results from the tests that were being taken on me um, until after some much needed conversation realized it was associated with my work environment and where I was and my inability to not handle stress well. So I um, wind up losing my mom in death and that was unexpected and um, wind up in my opinion suffering a nervous breakdown and dealing with um, severe depression. And so that really started my journey of personal development that let me get the courage to leave that toxic work environment. And at that point, there weren't any full-time positions for me to go into. And so I decided to start my business. Why not? Right. I met some people who had businesses that were in dental hygiene and I'm said, you know what, I don't know what I'm doing, but I am going to use my guy given talents and my passion and I'm going to start something. And that's what I did. Wow. That's very inspiring. And it's very inspiring to a lot of hygienists out there too, possibly facing the same situations that you were in. Um, so how, I know you're a mom. So how do you manage to achieve that work life uh, balance between everything? I know it can't be that easy. Oh, it's never easy. Um, and if someone says that it is, they are lying to you. Um, <laughs> bold face lie. Um, so I would say that it has not been perfect. I'm still not perfect. Um, in fact, I feel that at some point 
Um, women, we need to come to a place of giving ourselves some grace because um, we are juggling a lot, especially if you're a caregiver. And so there has to be a lot of difficult conversations. I happen to be married. I'm not a single parent. I grew up in a single parent household. So I have the opportunity to have these conversations with my husband and also make it very clear on what my strengths are and what makes me happy at the same time. I think as women, we forget that part of ourselves and that part of ourselves needs to be nurtured because that's what makes us a better parent and a better spouse. So for me, um, the biggest thing for me was still honoring who I am, but still creating a space for my children to flourish and for us to have time together. So I think over time, what has helped with that is developing strict boundaries. And as women, we're not encouraged to have boundaries. In fact, we're encouraged to do everything, be everything to everybody, okay? That's our patients, then our you know, employer, and then our kids and our spouse. And then, then after everybody's taken care of, then you get this much, right? So I think, um, the big thing for me was setting up boundaries, knowing I'm worthy of setting those boundaries and every single woman is, we're deserving of setting up those boundaries. So I have boundaries set for my kids. They know not to knock on this door unless the house is burning down. Um, <laughs> I have boundaries for my husband. I have boundaries for my workplace. I don't put certain work items on my phone. My email is not on here. I have a separate work number that's not tied to my personal number because you should be able to cut that off, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think for us, the hard part when people say, I don't know, like you really prioritize what you feel is important. If you feel that yourself is important, that you're supposed to take care of yourself, whether that's exercise or, or achieving our goals, you're gonna do that, right? You also, I also set aside time for my family. And what people don't realize is that all they see is a highlight reel. They see me working hard, my achievements. They see, you know, me selling my business. They don't see the other side that I keep private, which is the fact that my family every single week are worshiping together. The fact that my family and I are spending many hours volunteering our time in worship. Okay, and teaching others about the Bible. They don't see us, you know, going on our family vacations. They don't see us, you know, playing games and having a good time because honestly, that's a part of my life that's sacred. So it's not that I don't have it, it's just that I choose to keep a portion of my life private as much as I can, as much as a public figure that I am, mm -hmm. I keep that that as as private as can be. So I think you know, it's really about prioritizing, setting boundaries, and realizing that you're deserving as well as your kids and, and your partner, whoever, whoever else you have in your life. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now, uh, Jasmine, can you tell us a little bit about your work and what you offer? Because I know you have a lot of courses out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I've actually gone through a rebrand January of 2020. My focus is really to help side hustlers like me, um, who are like, who are very much like me, get their business from zero to hundred K. So my focus right now, a lot of my focus goes into the business rebrand that I'm in. So I have other hygienists and other dental professionals who have side hustles and I highly encourage women to diversify our income. We have been taught to not really do that, you know, rely on our employer or our mate um, or, you know, our partner, who whatever it is. And as women, when we start collectively growing together and building money and businesses, we improve our communities. So I um, focus a lot now on helping other women get to that level of personal freedom and being okay with knowing that we're all deserving of that because a lot of us deal with self-limiting beliefs. I also still speak, but of course with the quarantine, I'm not getting out that much. The topics that I'm very passionate about are public health, working with persons living with HIV, dealing with substance use disorder and diversity. And then of course I have keynote um, presentations that are all about creating a legacy and getting out of burnout. And those are my most impactful um, presentations that I don't want to stop. Um, and that's essentially because so many of us are burnt out. We're burnt out from life. We're burnt out from 
owning businesses. We're burnt out from just trying to be everything to everyone. And we don't get a chance to love on each other enough. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I, I know that's, uh, that's, that's very true. Mm -hmm. But um, I know as an entrepreneur, it cannot be that easy either, right? So how difficult is it to become an entrepreneur? And what are some of the challenges involved with building up a business as a female entrepreneur? Um, entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Okay. It is not glamorous. What people think entrepreneurship is people, you know, taking their money and going like this, you know, or they think it's like, you know, owning, uh, hot cars and, you know, walking around like this. And there's some great things about entrepreneurship, but that's what it's not. And what people don't understand is that when you start your own business, more than likely, especially in the beginning, you're going to be spending a lot more hours than you would for your regular job, right? Some people, you're done at 40 hours, right? You're supposed to be done at 40 hours. Well, more than likely, it takes more. Now, there are ways in which you can cut corners, like investing in a coach to help guide you. Um, but I didn't have those funds in the very beginning. So I would say that it is um, a difficult thing, but many entrepreneurs get into it because they want to be able to uh, live with their passion, be able to share their passion with others on their own terms. But you have to understand that with entrepreneurship, the biggest lesson I would say that you will learn is the amount of patience you need. Because to build something from scratch doesn't happen overnight. And that means that you have to consistently show up day in and day out, even though people aren't liking your stuff, even though you only have two views, even though there's a whole people, bunch of people lurking in the background, waiting and watching, and no one's really cheering you on. And I would say I, my philosophy is really simple and it's what I teach my clients. Sorry, there was like, I don't know what was in my face. <laughs> um, my philosophy is simple. It's, uh, this is a framework that I teach in my program for business entrepreneurs. It's confidence, construct, and elevate. You've got to build confidence and get that mind trash up out of your head because we all have it. You need to build systems in your business and learn to automate, construct, right? So that you can work efficiently and not be running yourself ragged. Okay. And then the third is elevate. How do you elevate your voice? How do you elevate your brand? How do you package your knowledge to share with the world and your expertise. And the hardest part for entrepreneurs is finding other people who believe in what they're doing and who are gonna cheer them on because it's scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, absolutely. So um, what are some of the qualities? So what quality should other hygienists look for in themselves to determine if they have what it takes to become a successful entrepreneur, in your opinion? <laughs> so um, I'm going to say th that's a really good question because we tend to look at our strengths and who, what makes us who we are and say, oh, I wish I had more of what Martha had. Oh, I wish I had more than what Jas Jasmine had. And that's not the case. There's no, everyone is made up of their own God-given talents and strengths, okay? It's, this is what's necessary. How bad do you want it? Mm -hmm. Okay? How bad do you want it? Because if you want to be able to achieve whatever your goals are, right, what are you going to do? You're going to work hard or you're going to hire someone that has the strengths that you may be lacking in to help you execute your vision and your dream. So it's not about what, you know, what makes me different from anyone else. The only difference is, is that I continue to show up and I haven't given up yet. So I think that's the most important thing that we need to understand is that, and this is where it comes again to females. This is a problem with us as females. We feel like we're never enough. We feel like we don't have what it takes. And that's the first step. That's the core of a successful business is having confidence and taking that mind trash out and get into work. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
So uh, what are some tips that you can give to hygienists out there seeking to start up their own business? Okay, um, so I would say the first tip I would say for those who are looking to start your own business is one, you need to get out of an employee mindset. That's my first tip for you because most dental hygienists are used to people purchasing for them, people, someone providing their paycheck, right? And that's a hindrance because in order to make money, you've got to spend money. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want, if you want shortcuts for your journey, you've got to invest in that boo-boo, okay? So, you know, there are going to be some mentors and sponsors along the way who may give you guidance, but the biggest shortcuts you can get, you'll have to pay. So I've, I've spent four figures uh, last year or the year prior to that in a, in a coach. This year, I've spent close to five figures for a coach. And each level I've invested in a coach that's what led me to my six figures last year. And that's what's gonna lead me to multiple six figures in the future. In three years, I'm telling y'all right now, in three years, I'm gonna make a million dollars, okay? <laughs> and, and I think for women, we have to be okay with saying, hey, I want that for myself. I want that for myself. Why? Because I'm gonna take care of my family. We have, we have a problem with saying that in our industry. We have a problem with that. I mean, whoever says that, someone here is going to be watching this and saying, how dare she? And you know what I'm going to tell them? Go jump in the lake, girl, bye. Because when I, when I grow my business to that level, what am I going to be able to do? Employ other women so they can have the freedom and, and work in a group where people are collaboratively working together and they are family and they're valued because a lot of us hygienists are not valued. What else am I gonna be able to do? I'm giving away a scholarship right now for $500. I'm gonna raise that as my business grows. Why? Because I know the financial constraints that women are dealing with in their business. What else am I gonna do with that money? Whatever else I desire to. I wanna go give me a long weave, that's what I'm gonna do because I work my butt off. So I think, you know, the biggest thing is we have to come to a realization of like what we truly want. And that's that getting rid of that employee mindset and getting really real with ourselves. Um, and, and I think that's the biggest hindrance is that I've talked to many hygienists. I was giving for years, giving stuff away for free and then people disappear. They don't follow through. And so that's the biggest thing is getting that employee mindset, getting to a place where you're really serious, there's a book that I read called um, the, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm going blank here. The five regrets of people who, who are dying. And this, this book is uh, written by Bonnie Ware. It's not like a emo book or anything like that where you're going to be crying your eyes out. But what she shared was she wind up going into uh, um, working in, oh my gosh, in long-term care, right? And she's working for these people who are currently dying and she shares the five regrets, main principles that have stood out. And one of the main ones that she heard from these people were that they wish they took the time to spend more time with their family, okay? They also wish that they, the idea that they had, they went forward and at least tried it. And for me, my mother never got that chance. There was too many financial constraints, which is why my scholarship is named after her because I am here to grow my business and to help other women and to continue my mother's legacy because she never had that opportunity. And I don't want to go to my deathbed if I decide to drop dead tomorrow and ever regret that I didn't spend the time with the people that I love, but in addition that I didn't pursue my dreams and goals because I decided to uh, play small because I was worried about what somebody else thinks. Okay. So ladies, let's cut that out 
And if you know for sure you're going to regret not pursuing your goals because you're concerned, concerned about what, you know, some hater is going to think, think about it like if you'd had, this was your last day on earth, what would you regret? What would you regret? And I'm all about living with no regrets. And my mother taught me that when she dot, dropped dead that day that she died. And so that's the biggest thing that I would say for entrepreneurs today. Wow, that's, that's very empowering too for a lot of hygienists out there trying to start up their own business. And I do agree with you 100%, uh, Jasmine, on that. Um, again, you know, you're very empowering. And I think you pretty much summed it all up in your words on how important it is to be able to get out of that mindset of being an employee and starting to think big. Because as hygienists, we have the power to move mountains, you know, together, or, you know, we have so much potential. And I think that a lot of hygienists aren't fully aware of all of the potentials that they have. Um, so now, can you provide us with some, um, can you provide the new graduating class with some words of wisdom? <laughs> <laughs> Run! No. Um. <laughs> okay, so yes, uh, new graduates. This is what I want to say to you. First of all, um, when you are out there going out there in the world. This is the main thing I want you to understand is that your path is your path, okay? My journey has been completely unconventional, all right? And I'll share that a little later. It's been completely unconventional. Why? Because I have put myself out there and have decided to make it my journey. I also think it's important, especially for my new graduates who come from marginalized communities. I am from Jamaica, Queens. I grew up in the projects. I am a black woman, if you didn't know. <laughs> if you can't see, okay? And when I first started my business, I had no one to look up to that looked like me that showed me it was possible. So I want you to understand that only you can determine what the possibilities are. Mm -hmm. And so yesterday I posted to a group, I will always be ready because I stay ready. Okay. I stay ready and I drop my seeds along the way and hopefully something will come into fruition. So as a new graduate, understand that you are not stuck anywhere that you don't want to be. And then ultimately, your progression in your career is up to you. You can have an amazing career in clinic, in clinical care. You can have an amazing career as an educator. You can have an amazing career as a corporate executive. You can have an amazing career as an entrepreneur. But it's really up to you and what you desire. And for my marginalized Black, Indigenous persons of color, I love you. And I want you guys to step out there even more, regardless if you see someone that looks like you doing what you desire to do. Just get out there. People are going to want to connect with someone that's genuine, that has a heart, and that's authentic. That's what matters. And there's plenty of times with me as a Black person, I am the only person of color in a room and of 500 people. And who cares, right? Because I am here to connect with people on a deeper level. And at the end of the day, we all share very same commonalities. We want to be loved, we want to be respected, and we want to be heard. And you leave with that, you'll be good. Yeah, uh, that's very empowering again. Uh, and it, you know, it's just, uh, it, it provides a good sense of empowerment for those hygienists out there just recently graduating. and just knowing just not to give up and just continue on and just keep going at it. If there's something that they want to uh, accomplish or achieve to just keep that in their mind and just continue moving forward. Um, again, Jasmine, very empowering <laughs> messages from you. 
thank you for being here with us today. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, so I'm here showing you just a little bit of my journey. This is what I share whenever I speak. So those who have, may have heard me speak, um, you know, just act like this is the first time you've seen this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so as stated, I'm an award-winning national speaker, podcaster, and pro educator. Um, I love educating individuals. I love speaking. I love creating content. And I am a multifaceted, multi-passionate entrepreneur. And I'm going to show you a little bit of where it all started for me and um, where I am today. So I grew up in the concrete jungle, New York. Woo -woo. <laughs> and this is the actual building that I grew up in. And my window is right here. <laughs> I grew up on the fourth floor and um, I still say some things in, in my New York accent, not as much like coffee, uh, things of that nature. Um, but what I didn't realize was that I was actually the bad kid. Okay, there was six of us and I was the bad, high energy, always getting into something. And then I calmed down a lot um, when I got older, but um, I was always dreaming and exactly who I am of always thinking of what the future can hold is exactly who I am today. Um, I didn't have, none of my siblings had gone to college. I didn't know if I should. Um, I had learned some things in my mother's own journey that she didn't get a chance to um, achieve in her own journey, but I knew I wanted more. So I actually went to a vocational high school in New York City and knew that I, I was in love with teeth since I was 13. So I did a um, program for dental assisting in New York City. And so I was a dental assistant at 16, 17. 16, I started working in dental offices. I was in the program and I was trained um, with that. And so I went ahead, finished that program and moved to Maryland. And I wind up deciding I wanted to go into dentistry. I wanted to be a dentist. And um, my mother couldn't afford to help care for me. So believe it or not, for those students out there, I was working nights, okay, straight hustling. I was teaching classes, these after school program called Mad Science. I was working nights at UPS from 10 to 3 a.m. But me, okay, I came in there with a nice um, jacket and these rough looking people <laughs> come in to, you know, box, you know, uh, load up the cars. And somebody looked at me and was like, yeah, she is not going to be loading up any trucks over here. I said cars, they're trucks. Um, and I wound up working at night and taking my classes during the day. It was not easy. There was plenty of times where I cried and didn't know how I was going to make it. But I wind up getting accepted to, there was only three schools at that time in Maryland, and I went to dental hygiene school, and I was able to enjoy it. I'm actually so glad I went there. Now, as you can see, not much has changed. You can see my Afro here, <laughs> um, and I had an amazing time, and I wind up becoming the president, the SADA president of my class, um, and I was able to grow. It was a strict program, but it is one of the best programs in the state of Maryland, um, and I'm so happy that I was able to learn. What I didn't realize was that my decision to continue on with my baccalaureate degree straight after um, my completion of my um, associate's degree. So I knew I was going to continue on. So I graduated in May, started in the fall with my baccalaureate degree and did it in one year. And I'm glad I did that. What I didn't realize was that my experience at the University of Maryland was going to really shape my career more than I realized. Those faculty there were really amazing, very empowering, and I'm so happy that I had a chance to meet them because they helped me to think beyond just being a clinical dental hygienist. They helped me to see that I was more and they helped encourage me. Um, I won a leadership award at my associate's degree program and then I won the leadership award here at the University of Maryland. And I decided to dedicate my entire year with working and serving persons living with HIV. This is where I met my mentor, Dr. Valley Meeks, who is still my mentor. And she helped encourage me and pour into me. So there's many people along your journey that will help encourage you, who will see your potential if you feel like you don't have it. And they'll help 
you to see that there's so many amazing things within you. And my, all of my faculty, from my associate's degree to my baccalaureate, were very impactful for me. What I didn't realize was that uh, maybe eight years or so, or six years after going here, I wound up being hired by this University of Maryland school system to become an educational consultant. So what's interesting is that I was a dental hygienist in an interprofessional faculty body where we actually um, worked together to teach uh, dental students, medical students, law, social work students, nursing students, dental hygiene students all together about HIV. I was the only dental hygienist um, that was invited from outside. So they had some faculty body, but from outside to come in and be an educational consultant. And that opportunity came because I never stopped my involvement with being a volunteer. Okay, so for those who are like, well, how do I find an opportunity? Find your passion and serve. Your opportunity will come. And I'm very proud of that. And it's that work that led me to getting my national award. But um, I really have just taken my natural talent and what I love and created whatever I desired and pivoted and evolved as much as I needed. So I've hosted live events, I've had podcasts, I um, educate, I get a chance to travel across the country. I have educated uh, close to 10,000, a little over 10,000 people and just live in person events in 13 states. And I've done that because I started doing the work and understanding what my strengths were and also getting rid of some of that mind trash that was preventing me. And then holding on to some of the things that my faculty were telling me about myself that I wasn't willing to see. So my biggest achievement in dental hygiene was in 2018 for my work with working with persons living with HIV, educating the community and going out there and teaching them about HIV, but also working with it in a professional program. I was awarded in 2018 with the award of distinction. And um, that was such a great, a great honor. As you can see, my hair was laid to the gods. Okay. <laughs> I was like, nothing is messing up my photo op, okay? But it was it was wonderful. It was like, it it just solidified to me how important what it was for me to follow the direction God was telling me to go, even though I was scared to leave jobs, even though I was scared and didn't know what was going to happen next, even though I was scared about starting my own business. I those those gut feelings that you have in in the pit of your stomach is leading you in the direction in which you should go. You just have to be good and still enough to listen to it. Mm -hmm. And so this is my main motivating factor. I have two little ones here, um, my chocolate drop husband. And I realized that that final stage when I was laying on the floor in my bathroom after spending an anniversary dinner with my family, curled up in pain and you know, crying and just in the worst place I could be, who was watching me? My kids. And I want to raise warrior women and I want them to understand that you are the person that will control what kind of circumstances you're in. And so that's what made, gave me the courage to start my business. That's what gave me the courage to see all of that amazing stuff in that collage happened because I decided to stop playing small, stop playing small, start taking better care of myself, removing toxicity out of my personal and work environment. And I'm so thankful that I did because I'm happy and um, my children are seeing a better version of, of who I am. And then that's it. Oh, wow. What a powerful journey and wow. Uh, it it pretty much uh, it shows you know to everyone too that you know you really got to work hard and just keep your mind set you know to what you want. So thank you so much for sharing that with us today, Jasmine, and for sharing all of your wonderful knowledge with us. It really has been a true pleasure to have you here with us today, and thank you. So we will include uh, Jasmine's information 
and just make sure to check out her um, her site. Um, also, if uh, you'd like to uh, take a look at her mom, Genis uh, community, uh, she does have a mom, Genis community on Facebook, and uh, we will pro be providing you with those links as well. All right, everyone, thank you so much, Jasmine, again. It's been a thank true honor to have you with us today, and uh, take care. <laughs> thank you so much, Martha. I appreciate it. You were wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye.